Any child under three can travel unrestrained in the back of... Oi! A taxi or a minicab. It seems extraordinary, and today we're going to find out what happens to an unrestrained toddler right. should the worst happen. First, it's worth remembering how vital baby seats are. AA Trust research shows how even a child cradled on a parent's lap isn't safe. This test was based upon a real-life crash where the child fractured spine and skull at just 19 miles an hour. There would have been little or no injury if the child had been in a baby seat like this. But even then, the dangers aren't over. You've got to make sure the seat's been fitted properly, not just slung in the back with the seatbelt hurriedly lashed around it. Otherwise, this happens. The message is clear. Without a proper restraint, even low-speed impacts can have devastating consequences. So why does the law allow under threes to romp free in the back of cabs? Maybe there's a good reason. Maybe the layout of a cab interior is in some way safer than a normal car. There's one way to find out. We're going to crash this taxi at just 30 miles an hour and see what happens to those inside. The passengers for our taxi's final fare are crash test dummies. Our adult dummy will be wearing a seatbelt because the law states that if they're fitted, adults must wear them. Our so-called classification three child dummy will also be complying with the law. So he'll be traveling unrestrained. Time to crash. Okay, here it goes. Doesn't look very dramatic, does it? In fact, the 50-year-old design seems to have held up pretty well, with the passenger compartment still nicely intact. But watch again from inside, where it's a very different story. It's horrific. The sensors on our 18-kilo toddler showed that it left the seat at 30 miles an hour exactly the same speed the taxi was travelling. It spears the toughened glass partition head-on, which exerts a massive deceleration on the child, a startling 79G at its peak. Just imagine taking a blow to the head, the equivalent of 79 times your body weight. A force of this magnitude would cause certain skull fractures and probably death. Thanks to a seatbelt, the adult would have walked away. So why does the law, which applies to minicabs as well as black taxis, let under threes travel without restraint? Well, it's there for very practical reasons. You could almost say for common sense reasons. You can't expect the cabbies to go out and buy the four or five different types of child seats you need for all the different types of kids, because that's going to cost about 600 odd quid. Neither could you expect parents to lug a seat around the shops with them all day. So there's probably a chance for someone out there to design a seat that could dabble as something like a rucksack. So if anyone's out there who watches Dragon's Den, take note. Rather than berating cabbies or lawmakers, hopefully what this test does is put the duty of care on the parents. Just because it's the law doesn't mean that it's a wise thing to do. So think ahead about your journeys. Instead of going for something like a taxi without a kid seat in it, go for something that's big and huge and slow, like a bus with a massive crumple zone. Here we go, here we go, here we go. A direct hit, and it was as spectacular as my worst fears. 